Hello, I'm Vince Pazat. Today, we're going to rebuild a Terra valve. So let's go over the parts that we're going to need today. A pair of needle nose pliers, a small pair of ice grips, 7 16 wrench, a half inch wrench, a drill driver to cut down on our time, and a flathead screwdriver. What comes in the kit? The piston, the sleeve, Loctite, a new top diaphragm, a new plug, clean out plug, a seat, two copper washers, and some assembly grease. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is start tearing down the valve. You want to be careful when you pull off the top cap that you don't rip a hole in your diaphragm. Screws. You'll see the top cap, blue cap. You will see the diaphragm that's connected to the piston assembly. What we're going to do is just go ahead and grab a hold of that and twist it. And it should come right out. And there, we're going to flip the valve over. Take out the cleanup port. The base. Remove the base of the hardware. You want to inspect for any grooves worn in the base. Uh, a lot of times you are able to turn the base 180 degrees and get a brand new side and leave the groove over here on the side where the brace wouldn't necessarily hit. Remove the seat. Inspect it. Um, obviously a beveled side always goes towards a piston. So it would be sitting like this when it's on the blast pot. Beveled side would go up. and we're going to remove the sleeve. Um, when you inspect this, when you buy a new Revo kit, it comes with a new one with the internal gaskets. Um, in a SEALS kit only, these gaskets, you just use a pick tool and pick them out and um, walk them out and make sure they go in the correct direction. And we'll go through that when we assemble it back together. You also have the base gasket that cleans as well. Okay, so we have a bare body. We're, we're gonna inspect this body for any kind of scoring or anything you would see on the inside, as well as the top. You wanna make sure this area is all clean. You spray everything down with brake cleaner and use a rag and make sure there's no debris left in it. Set this off to the side. Then we're gonna get our rebuild parts kit and start bringing everything in. Um, I think we'll start at the bottom. We'll re rebuild our way up. So we have our base. We're gonna grab our body. Take the new sleeve. So this sleeve comes with all the seals on it, ready to roll. So the first two wipers on the internal, I don't know if you can see, face towards the bigger end of the sleeve. And then the top one faces up. So the responsibilities of these gaskets are to clean the piston. When it goes through the upstroke, make sure nothing gets on the piston when it comes up to lock it up and then vice versa. This gasket would go like this, and it would sweep the piston clean as it goes down. And we're going to move on to the top assembly. We'll set that off to the side with the base, and we're going to do some stuff. I'm just using a simple pair of ice grips. It's got a flat side on the top of the post. Obviously, if you have a small enough wrench, 
that would be ideal. Take our half inch wrench, bust this nut loose. You will notice the nut is very stiff coming off. It's purposely threaded that way so that it doesn't walk off in the field and stays tight. Okay. From there, we will remove the nut. Then the copper washer. Then the whole entire diaphragm assembly should come off with the two pucks. Then you will have a new washer, and then your post. So the new rebuild kit is going to come with a new sleeve and new brass washers. So we're going to rebuild this valve and put it back together. We're going to get the sleeve. And before we do anything with the sleeve, we're going to go ahead and slide the new piston in. Obviously, we want to make sure it's in the proper direction. So I found that if you put the sleeve or the piston in the sleeve before you assemble everything, it goes together a lot easier than battling the wiper seals. So once we get these two into place, you'll notice it slides right in easy. Then we will put the last wiper seal facing up like this in the valve. Then we will slide this whole assembly into the valve from the bottom up. And you will notice on this valve as well, it's got a flat side. Just make sure flat side's aligned. And from there, we're going to put the new seat. Beveled side goes towards the piston. Flat side goes towards the base in the valve. And we're going to re-bolt up the base. Go ahead and tighten it down as well. Again, walk it on like a car wheel. You don't want to go side to side in the caddy corner. For the first two. Now we're going to assemble the top diaphragm. So, get rid of our two old copper washers. So first things first is a copper washer. Then the puck, obviously clean side, goes towards the rubber so we don't tear it up. New diaphragm. The top puck. The remaining copper washer. And the nut goes back on there. We'll use our vice grips and Clamp the post again. I'm going to walk the nut back onto the valve. Make sure things tighten up there. From there, we're going to go ahead and push our piston all the way down on the valve. Use the white spring with the top assembly. And then bolt the top side back down. washer and nut. You'll notice it's under good spring tension, so you definitely want to get the thread started on the nut first. From there, we'll use the impact, cut down on time. And again, walking it on opposite sides so you don't pull the top of the body down wrong. 
and then walk it around. And then the final thing we're going to do is replace with a new plug, or clean out port plug. It's pretty self-explanatory. Just make sure you start the bolts by hand first. Now these particular bolts, we're going to want to tighten up with a wrench so we don't strip out the body housing. And there you have it. That's how you remove a tear valve. Thanks for stopping in. Hope this helps you in the field.